Okay, Booker Tov. Today's stuff is Kufi Dalid 114, and we pick up the two dots. We're about uh, about uh, 10 lines down or 12 lines down. And this is the last parak, and it's all about continuing the discussion of Shut Echutz, but it's going to move into the question about relating to the issue of Bamot, how when Bamot were permiss- permissible, when they were forbidden um, at different stages within Jewish history. But right now, or, you know, Torah history. Um, but right now, we are anyway in the continuing discussions about what types of things you are transgress and don't transgress for when you shecht outside the base Hamikdash. So we basically did the paraduman this year, Hamishaleach, although um, even even if you shaft it in the wrong place outside the base of Mikdash, its place is outside of the base of Mikdash, and therefore it's not chut, it's not a petachol moed lo hevio. Um, so you're exempt for those. I should say that Tosus points out that based on another Gemara, actually, if you shech the Sihar Mishaleach before the lottery is drawn, before the lots are drawn, you actually are chayim, because at that stage, it's not specifically the Sihar Mishaleach. It's one of the goats and could just as easily wind up being the one that gets used, you know, as the, uh, you know, you know, on, you know, on, you know, on Yom Kippur as the one that goes to Hashem. But anyway, so that's interesting. Um, but anyway, you're exempt for those. Those are not heading the Petachol Moed. And now the mission goes on to talk about um, other types of invalidities. It mentioned things like animals used in bestiality, animals used, used in idolatry, animals with blemishes, and so on. But Rabbi Shimon comes, and you're exempt for all of those, but comes along Rabbi Shimon, and Rabbi Shimon says, actually, if it's something that right now can't be brought as a korban, but in the future has the, will be able to be brought, you transgress in order a negative prohibition. You don't get kares, which is the punishment for shvot because right now it can't be brought, but if it's able to be brought in the future, you will transgress a lav, a negative prohibition. And the rabbis disagree. They say, no, if there's no kares, there's no lav. You don't transgress, at least in this case, they're linked. If you don't Transgress if you don't get cars, you don't get anything if it's not fit now to be brought. What's an example of things that are not fit now to be brought that will be fit later? Um, a passing blemish, um, something that is uh, an issue of Oso Vespino, its mother was shechted, or you know, or it was shechted, you know, its mother or its child was shechted today, and therefore this thing cannot be shechted today. So that's a type of a machusser's man, it's lacking the right time. Or there's other ways of machusser's man, it's not yet eight days old. Um, it is uh, too young, it's a bird that's too young, something that it's going, it's not yet the right time for it. You know, when I was young, there was an ad about a certain wine, we will sell no wine before it's oh, time. I remember, I remember, remember that. that. Uh, anyway, so anyway, we will be mocked with no carbon before it's time. Anyway, so there's Mechusser's man. And then the last example is something that the problem is that's not the right time, not because the animal isn't yet at the right stage, but that the owners are not yet at the right stage to be, to be able to bring it, like a chatas for a yoledes or a zav or Whatever. All of those are things that are not yet the time, and Rabbi Shimon says, the Chum say, since you can't bring them now, um, and they, you are patur, and Rabbi Shimon says, no, you transgress a negative prohibition. You don't get kares, but you transgress a negative prohibition. So let's take a look at the Gemara, the two dots, Balei Mumi, Moso, Vespino, etc. Vitzrichi. You need to tell me they debate all three cases. The Itana Bali Mumim, how we just said they debated the case of an animal with a blemish that is transitory. So I would say, Mishum Dimi'isi. That's why the rabbis say that you're not chayim, because since it has a physical blemish that's somehow seen as more, you know, repugnant, and therefore, um, um, and therefore it's more fully rejected, um, and that's why, because it's more fully, like, rejected and not appropriate for, oh, for you know, for the, for the Beis HaMikdash, even though it's transitory, you're not chayim when you shecht it outside, or you don't transgress anything. Um, Avaltari uh, in the but if it's birds that are just, they're too young, there's nothing repugnant about them. Maybe the rabbis agree to Rebbe Shimon that at least, again, you don't get kares because you can't bring it now, but at least you would transgress a negative prohibition. Vitana Torin, if it said that, Mishim Delo Chazi, the Idchi, that's because they were never fit and pushed away. Of a balimumim, the ichzi, the idchi, but balimumim that were fit and pushed away. So, Ema, now it's an interesting question what your gear say here is. Ema, and our gear says, Ema moduluhu rebbe shimon the rabbana. Maybe the rabbis, Rabbi Shimon would agree to the rabbis that you would be that you would be exempt. So it's funny because now it's introducing a new reason. If it's just reversing the point, maybe Rabbi Shimon would agree to the rabbis that it should have said that by a balmum, which is repugnant. Isi, maybe he would agree that it's so pushed away 
that it is, uh, you know, that you don't even transgress a negative prohibition even for Rebbe Shimon. It's funny that it introduces another reason why Balei Momim, there's more of a reason to be exempt, um, because they were fit and rejected, and something fit and rejected is seen as more rejected. Of course, you know, the Gears here is a little funny, and you could have made the opposite argument. Balei Momim, at least there was a time when they were fit. So that maybe means there's more of a reason you'd be chayim. Maybe likely. that's more of a reason the rabbis the rabbis would agree with Rabbi Shimon, not that Rabbi Shimon would agree with the rabbis. Anyway, there's an argument to be made why you both have to say the case of a blemish and the case of a of a young bird. A blemish has the ne more negative in that it's, it's it's a blemish, and it's also a possible more negative that it was fit and, fit and rejected. Or well, you could see that as a possible more positive that there was time it was fit. Vias vitana honey tart. If you just said these two. That's some intrinsic problem in the animal itself. But if it's an issue like it's not that the bird is too young, but that the mother was shechted today, so the problem came from something external to it. Okay, it's now it's not right day, but it's not because it isn't developed enough or it's not you know unblemished enough. Something external happened, so maybe fundamentally, if you look at it intrinsically, it is able to, it should be able to be brought to day were it not for this external problem. So therefore, maybe Ama Modile Rabban Reb Shimon. Again, here's another reason the rabbis should agree to every Shimon and say it's enough in the parsha that you actually maybe transgress the negative prohibition. Again, not get kares because it can't be brought, but at least transgress uh, transgress the negative prohibition. Srihi. So that's why you needed to tell me all these cases, no matter how much rejected it is or not rejected it is, the rabbis say, for whatever reason it can't be brought today, you don't transgress anything. And Rabbi Shimon says, even if you can't bring it today, if it can be brought later, at least you transgress a negative prohibition. Shahi Rabbi Shimon Omer. And now it, then the mission itself spells out for us the principle of Rabbi Shimon. So Rabbi Shimon used to say, anything that can't be brought today, but can be brought another day, you don't get kares, but you transgress a negative prohibition. Now we want to say that's a very nice principle. Mm -hmm. And it's a nice sort of way of splitting your vote, you know? Mm -hmm. It's either close enough in the partial, but it's not fully Roy. But the question is, okay, but where do you get this idea, other than pure logic, that there, there should be this middle ground? So my time at Rabbi Shimon, what's his reasoning? I'm Rabbi Ilo, I'm Rabbi Shlakish. because the verse says, Okay, so this is a cryptic verse where Moshe says to Bnei Israel, don't do like you're doing now, everybody, what you seems right in your eyes. You haven't yet come to the resting place and the inheritance that God has given to you. Okay, whatever, Michael, what's the end of the Pasuk? Actually, this is coming up, right? Right, and it'll be that place that God brings you, Sham Taviyu. Right, so the simple sense of the verse is, don't do like you're doing now, where you're bringing your kabanot in every place, but when you cross the yard, you're going to bring it in a central right. place. The funny okay, thing and the funny thing is that what do you mean? At the time of the mid, there was a mission, they were bringing it in the central place. And by the way, that each call your sharpe knob echoes or foreshadows or whatever, pre echoes, whatever the word is, of, you know, so the show team, the repeating theme in show team is, you know, each Yamima Haim, Ain Melech Israel, each Yashar Benav Yasem, right? So, which is basically the idea like everybody doing their own thing, right? Um, and, um, um, you know, so anyway, and uh, is it ever explicitly tied into the Bamos? That's another repeating theme. But I don't know if it's a tied because the, the Torah doesn't really get to be angry about sort of focusing on the Bamot until there's a base of Mikdash, even though for the Chazal, right, sort of the period of uh, Shiloh, there was an Isser Bamot. But anyway, the idea is everybody's doing their own thing certainly suggests the world of Bamot. So the simple read of that verse is don't do like you're doing now, everybody bringing on their own Bamot, you're going to cross the yard and there's going to be a central place and it's only going to be one place to bring it. The problem is there's only one place to bring it in the time of the Michigan as well. So how do you read the Pasuk? So here's the way we're going to read the Pasuk, okay? So Dhamma uh, Krothwar says, Lo tasun kuchol asharnach no sin pohayom. I'm only Moshe Yisrael. So Moshe Tess said to the Jewish people, Ki elisul aretz, when you get to the land, yashrus takrifu, chovos lo sakrifu. Do the stuff that's right in your eyes, not the stuff that you're obligated to do. Meaning, the, you do the neder and the nedava, the free will sacrifices, which are shlamim and olot. Do not do the obligatory one. That's not you're doing it because it seems right in your eyes. That's because you're doing because you're obligated. So don't do the like the asham and the chatos. Okay. So now the way we're reading it is so lo tasun when you pass the yarday. Now you're doing both hayashar beina. Not you're not only doing yashar beina. You're not only doing you know nidarim and nidavos. You're also doing chovos because you're doing it in the mishkan. 
בעיה, כאשר אתה לא תעשו ככל הנכס שאנחנו עושים פה היום, don't do, it's very, they're like a big wall in the passage, don't do like you're doing today, which is both yasher be'inav and chovos, but rather, okay, once you cross the yard, they only do, you know, each, you know, call yasher be'inav. Then once you pass the yard, you only do the nedarim and the nedavot when there's a time of heter b'amot. By heter b'amot, you're only allowed to do nedarim and nedavot. You're not allowed to do chovot. Okay? And then when you get to build a base hamikdash or shiloh, then you'll go back to be able to be bringing chovot. Okay? So that's how we read it, which is the basic halacha that only neither a nedav is kari b'amot. Only nedarim and nedavot are brought on a b'amot. Fine. How is that relevant for our purpose? It's relevant in the following way. Okay, ki alizu l'aretz, ha'ashis takrivu, chobos l'takrivu, v'gilgal, v'gabi yushilo m'chus r'smadu. Now we're assuming, this is not Pshad in the Mishnah, Pshad in the Mishnah, you might remember, spoke about bringing like kachi kachim and gilgal, which kachi kachim are basic, that can be eaten, are basically chovot, or chata sanashim. But this Gemara right now is assuming that when it says you're only going to be able to bring chovot when there's a when there's a central <laughs> location, it means only in Shiloh and the Beis HaMikdash. Even in a place like Yogal and Novin Givon, where there is a large Bama and a communal Bama, at that time, also, there you're only going to be able to bring the Dharma to the vote. There is going to be no Chavot, no Chatas, and no Asham, okay, during the period, except at the time of Shiloh and the Beis HaMikdash. So even if you wanted to bring it at Gilgal, you would not be able to bring a Chatas or an Asham. So what do you do? Let's say you committed a sin. Yep, yes. What are you doing nowadays when you commit a sin? Okay, but back then, there actually were Kovona. Hey, what can I tell you? That's this read. Now, that's not at all our mission. Our mission assumes that, of course, you could bring Chovot at the central Bama, uh, at the, like, Bama Gedola, okay? But here, not. So now... What's impelling them to read it that way? Well, we're trying to come up with an explanation for Reb Shimon, okay? It's not going to be the only read for Reb Shimon. This is a Reb Shimon approach, not a Chachamim approach. What is this going to lead to? How is this going to lead to Mokos or Isman? We'll see in a minute. Let's read the next line, Okay. The Gilgal, the Gabi Yishilo, so let's say you were, you had a chatas, you had a break, and it was only Gil, it was a time of Gilgal. So that chatas would have been a mechusser's man. It was not yet the time to bring that chatas, because there was no yet, um, you know, uh, uh, it wasn't yet the time of Shilo, it wasn't well, yet the time of the Beis HaMikdash. It's a little bit different. I know, it's but the Gemara wants to imagine this as mechusser's man. You're obligated in the chatas. And you can't bring it because it's not yet lo vasemar aten. I agree with you. What do you mean to mechusher? It's all like mechusher makom, as it were. Like somehow, you know, you need a certain type of a structure. You need a central base on mikdash. It's not just like the time hasn't arrived. Anyway, so it's a, it is a very complicated way to get to this idea. And you're right. It seems to be mixing things up. Okay, it, you know, it's not like a context of a time of an iser bamos and what are the parameters of an iser bamos. Here it's a time of a heter bamos where within the whole universe of heter even in Gilgal, you're not allowed to bring certain things, okay? Mm -hmm. And therefore, the Kamar Lumosha, Lo Ta'asun, don't do this. So basically what we're doing is like this. We're taking a verse that we're reading to say, don't bring Chovos on a Bama. And what we're saying is, rather than looking at it as a violation of what, what are the restrictions of what you can do when there's a Heter Bamot, and if you bring an obligatory Korban on a Heter Bamot, maybe you violate, we're going to trans translate that into bringing a, 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 a het, an ob obligatory Korban on a Bama is a problem of Mechusser Zman, because this would be the time to bring it if there was, like, Shiloh or the Beis HaMikdash. And from here we learn out that Mechusser Zman you are a, actually, you do transgress the negative prohibition, even though it's not royal of Omoy, because there's no Omoy right now. So it's very weird. We get this prohibition. Um, a, we get this huge period now where they couldn't bring Chatas and Hashamas, so they couldn't bring Chavot. Right now, they can't even bring it to, you know, at Gilgal and Novan Givon. And number two, we turn something which is a restriction of what you're allowed to bring at the time of Heter Bamot to translate that into an issue about the scope of the restriction of Isser Bamot. That Mechusser Zman is a prohibition. Okay, so now the Gemara says, Amar Rabbi Yirmiyah, this is not the only source we're going to give for Rabbi Shimon. It's a very complicated way of explaining Rabbi Shimon. Amar Rabbi Yirmiyah, the Rabbi Zerah. So Rabbi Yirmiyah said to Rabbi Zerah, Yihachi, if that's true, Nilka Nami Lilki, you should get lashes because you transgress this issue of Lot Asun. Okay, and Alama, Amar Rabbi Zerah, Hakasuv Nitko Laase. 
that the verse transformed it into an assay. Now, normally, nitak l'assay means it's a negative prohibition, which is linked to an assay, and if you do the assay, you don't get lashes. But here, nitak l'assay means it, it converted it to an assay. It's only an assay. What's the it? So there's a whole discussion in the Gemara and Chulin, okay, which is that if what happens when you shech, let's forget let's forget the time of Bamot. You bring inside the base Hamikdash an animal that its mother was shech to today, okay? And it's Mechus Rishman. Because it can't be brought today, right? And you shecht it in the base of Mikdash. So first of all, you're going to get lashes for the transgressing the prohibition of Oso Vespino. You shechted the child of something whose mother was shechted today. Will you also get lashes for violating the prohibition of shechting a puzzle korban in the base of Mikdash? Apparently, there is a prohibition of like lo yiratzeh, okay, that um, that you would actually you know transgress if you shechted a, a, a korban that was that was pasul in the base of Mikdash. If you so knew the, it was pasul, yeah, if you knew it was pasul. So the Gemara says no. When it comes to mechusers man, that's only an, an assay prohibition, okay, and it is not is um, um, and, and you do not actually get lashes for slaughtering something mechusers man in the base of Mikdash, okay? Well, so, you mean you're saying you're mentioning Yibahala? Yeah, no, that's something so. else. That's something well, no, that's your standard mechusers man. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, so no, right. for us, we, what we have to know is because the basic point that we're making is we're confusing things. We're talking about something that's a restriction for how you bring a korban in the prop in this context to turning it into like a, a halacha about you know chutz about about a, a, an issue about iser bamos. But so that's what the Gemara is saying is wait a minute. According to you, Lo Ta'asun is telling you, don't bring a obligatory korban. You know, at, you know, in the you know during the period of uh, of Gilgal. Okay, so if you're bringing it, so we're not only saying don't bring it on Obama, don't even bring it in Gilgal, an yeah. obligatory korban, <laughs> okay? And you're saying that that's where Rabbi Shimon gets his idea that there's a negative prohibition. Okay, so that means that if you do bring this obligatory korban, right, which you're calling a type of a mechusser's man, okay, you get lashes. So you would get lashes even if you brought it at Gilgal. But wait a minute, we have a principle that if you bring a mechusser's man, if you in the base of Mikdash, you don't get lashes. And according to your argument that you want to create this whole idea that this is a pasuk about Mechusr's man, you know, being brought, whether it's on a bum or whether it's in Gilgal, then at least you should get lashes. At least if you bring it in Gilgal, at least you bring it in the, you know, central Makon, right? Because according to you, I mean, excuse me, then you should, excuse me, based on you that it's a separate pasuk, you should get lashes, okay? But... We know that you don't get lashes. We know that when you slaughter a mukhusr's man, okay, you only it's only an assay. So what's the answer? Is this saying that you can't only bring your own khatat? You can bring a communal khatat though? No, I mean according to this it would sound like yeah, you wouldn't bring any communal So like so the so the you know the the Musafim or wherever. Yeah, I don't know. Right. So that's you that's you know, what's the it? point of a Bama Gadol? I like would they bring any communal sacrifices? Would they bring yeah, I don't know. It's well, a very bizarre idea. Yeah, how does it differ from just doing it? Yeah, I, 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 yeah, exactly. I guess exactly. you mean the tummy, though, but like, you know. You know. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't figured out exactly the implications of that for every shimmy. So the Gemara says, Hani mili the Rabbana. You know what? That's true for the rabbis, that it's only an assay. If you shech the Mechusr's man in the base of Mikdash, or you shech this like Chatas and Gilgal or something. But Rabbi Shimon, for Rabbi Shimon, that we're saying that he learns from this passage of Lo Ta'asun, don't bring a chatos, you know, at the time of Gilgal, whether in your own Kabama or in Gilgal. So according to him, Einachinami, if you shechted a chatos in Gilgal, which is basically a mechusser's man, you would get malchus, not like we said in that other Gemara that it's only say. Okay? With Rabbi Shimon, hachinami, you would get malchus. Okay, so it's all very complicated. We're confusing all these different categories. Rav Nachman by Yitzhak Gamar, punning the Gilgal with Rabbi Shilo, No, 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 no. He says it's not relevant, okay? Because here, right, the case where, or maybe I can draw a picture now. Sort of, I don't know, picture yourself, So here's your base on the. Well, you have the base on the. It's just a beautiful I know, you're right. What can I tell you? All right, anyway, here's your base on the. We'll draw it in the whole normal way. Okay, fine, whatever. Okay. Now, if you have here and you shech your, your animal, right? And it's like day seven, okay? So that's Mechusser's man. Okay, for example, then we say that that's only an assay. That's not a lot assay for shakti. That's when there is a base on the flesh. Now, here we are in the world of Gil, uh, of, of pre base on the flesh. Okay, here's Gilco. I don't know why I'm imagining it up on a mountain. Okay, I don't know. That's your 
Bamagadola in Gilgal. And here's your private little bama in your backyard. Okay. And what we're saying here <laughs> is that if you bring your little uh, your little animal that's like a chatas, which is now Mahusar's man, because chatas are not supposed to be brought during this period, okay, because there's no you central base on mixed okay. So we're going to say here that you brought you bring this thing which equals Mahusar's man. You bring it on your bama, we're going to say that's low ta'asun. And that's your negative prohibition. And from there we learn out that, you know, it's bizarre because the basic problem here is not Isser Vamos. The basic problem here is Isser iser Obligatory Korbanot. But from this is going to be our basis of saying that Bisman Isser Vamos, if something is Mechusser Zman, you get lashes. You don't, you're not Chayef Karis, but you get lashes. From this scenario where to these man Eter Vamos. And the real problem is, is that you're just bringing something that you're not allowed to bring that happens to be identified as Mechus Rishman. So then the question is, so if that's true, but we know that over here, when you check something Mechus Rishman, it's only an assay. If you're telling me this, that's telling me that this is a lot assay. So then here, logically, it is the sort of the shechting Mechus Rishman in the inner, like in the inside, right, in the inner place, okay? This should only be a low, this should be a, an assay mm-hmm. based on that. But based on this, it's a low assay. So how do you resolve it? So, and, right, because based on this, it's a low mm-hmm. assay, but based on this comparison, it should be an assay. So answer number one is, it is an assay for Rebbe, for, 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 I'm sorry, answer number one is that for Rebbe Shimon, who says low assay, it's a low assay. Okay, he disagrees, and he would say that's a low assay. Okay. So that, Rebbe Shimon. Rebbe Shimon would yeah. disagree with this. So you okay. leave this consistent. So Rebbe Shimon would sort of say that's a low tasse. That's answer number one. Okay. Answer number two is that the reason this is an ass- only an asse and not a low tasse is because it's in the inner space. It's inside the Azara. Okay. Mm-hmm. So here, because there is no inner space, right, even though you're in Gilgal, Gilgal, as you guys were saying, is not really that different than your private backyard bama. Okay? So when you take a mechusser's man and you put it in the inner space, you're only going to do an asse. When you do it in these, like, outside bamas, okay, so one reason it's going to be a low tasse is because that's a low tasse. The other reason it's going to be, this is going to be a low tasse here, is because this is considered to be chutz. And the assay is only when it's a mechusser's man that's shechti pifni. Okay? So that's the second. For the lashes? Yeah. And, and you, you get, get lashes. Uh-huh. Okay? The only question is why you're getting lashes if here you don't get lashes. And the answer is either here you do get lashes, according to Rabbi Shimin, or this is considered to be outside. And when, when is it that you're free from lashes? When you do it inside. Okay? So the says like this. Um, Rabbi Nachman by Yitzchakam are punning the Gilgal, no, the inner space of Gilgal, the Gabishila Kichutz Tami. That's like outside. So, therefore, when do we say you only get an assay when you shech the Mechusser's man? When you're inside the like Mikdash. Here, there's no Mikdash. So, therefore, it's a low assay. Rabbi Amar, okay, so those were very complicated answers, right? Because it got us all mixed up in a whole other set of categories. Mm-hmm. And the real problem there was not the problem of Shrut Echutz, mm-hmm. okay? So now we get to move on to something a little bit more understandable. Rabbi, our time at Rabbi Shimon can No, no, no. Here's what Rabbi Shimon is based on. Rabbi Shimon, I mean, I was over Pesach, the Vamus Yochi, the Shah Sister of Bamus Kubelotase. How do you know if you shech the Pesach and your private Bama at the time of Isser Bamot that it's a low Tase? Now, why would you need a Pesach to tell me that if it's time of Isser Bamos and you shech the Korban Pesach? And that's a classic case of a chi of kare, so bringing a korban at the time of an iser bamos. So we're going to have to see. Anyway, Tamad Lomar, lo tuchal yizbochet ha pesach be'achad sharecha. Okay, you can't show the korban pesach in any one of your gates. You have to do it in a central location. Yochel af b'shas setra bamos came. Maybe when bamos are permissible, even so, maybe lo tuchal yizbochet ha pesach tells me a pesach can never be brought at your private bama, which makes sense because it's a it's sort of obligatory. It's not communal, but it's obligatory, right? So maybe even at the time of heter bamos, you're not allowed to bring your korban pesach at your private location. Tamad Lomar be'achad sharecha. Although the Chad Sharecha means in each one of your private towns you can't bring it, but we're sort of reading it the reverse. When is it that you're not allowed to bring your Korban Pesach in your private town when there's a central location? So, this so according to Rabbi Shimon, you can actually bring your Pesach? Well, this is, first of all, we haven't said that this is uh, Rabbi Shimon. 
right? Oh yeah, it is Rabbi Shimon. I'm sorry, I'm a Rabbi Shimon. Sorry. So right. So first of all, this is interesting. This sounds like for Shas Heter Abamos. You know, you can bring everybody can bring their private korban pesach, which is fascinating. Mm -hmm. Okay, but for right now, we're going to focus on the fact that he says that with Bishas Isra Bamos, you're not. Now, why do you need a special pasuk to tell me Bishas Isra Bamos, you're not allowed to bring a korban pesach on your bama? Why is it different than anything else? So let's take a look. Well, because it has this quasi korban yachid stand. So what? So it's an Isra Bamos. Shas Isra oh, Bamos. Right. So of course, Shas Isra Bamos, you can't bring a korban But it's also a korban. Why do you need a separate pasuk? It's also a korban tibor to, to an extent. So. Okay, so what? You can't bring any korban. It's the time of Isra Bamos. It's a base of Mikdash. Why do you need a pasuk to tell me special? You can't bring a korban Pesach. Okay, so let's take a look. So the Gemara says like this. Do Why don't we see what the Gemara says? So the Gemara <laughs> says like this. Um, okay, Amos. Now, what are we talking about? Inima Acha Chatzos. Here we're talking about after Chatzos, when it's the time of bringing korban Pesach. So Karis Nami Mechai. So it's another way of saying, why do you need a, a special pasuk? It's not a special pasuk about korban pasuch. It's your classic shkutei chutz. And the, by quoting a pasuk by lo suchali bochad it sounds like it's a simple negative prohibition. No, this is the classic shkutei chutz. If there's a beis hamikdash and you're bringing your korban pasuk in your private bama, you're chayiv kares. Okay, so clearly we're not talking about that scenario. That scenario is a much more central pasuk and you're chayiv kares. Okay, el alav kardem chatzos. It must be before Chatzos. Now, and, man. and therefore, it's Mechusser's man. And this is Rebbe Shimon's basis. So that's what a nice basis. Now, at least we're talking in a parameters we recognize. It's a time of Isser Bamos. Okay? You obviously get Kares if you bring your Korban Pesach after Chatzos, because it's Royal Apatachal Moed. What do you get if you bring your Korban Pesach that morning? It's Mechusser's man. So the Chachamim would say, you're off the hook. Rebbe Shimon says, no, I got a Pasuk. Lo to Chalis Bochda Pesach, and that says you at least transgress a negative prohibition, even if it's not yet the right time for the Korban Pesach. And from there, Rabbi Shimon learns that at the time of Isser Bamos, if you bring something before the right time, you still get a negative prohibition. That at least is a very straightforward learning, because we're dealing with the issue of Isser Bamos, and we're telling us even at not the right time, there still is a negative prohibition. Okay, that would be very nice, but the Gemara doesn't want to accept it. I mean, it's a good learning, but the Gemara says there's ways to say he's talking about another scenario. Okay, the Gemara says no. Elav um, chatzos. Says the Gemara, no. You know what? I could say we're talking after chatzos. After chatzos, why do you need a special pasuk? It's a. It's it's basically your classic shkutei chutz. Uh, now we're going to get confusing again. Okay, <laughs> it's after Chatzos, even though it said Bashas Isser Bamos, we mean Shas Het, we're talking about Shas Heter Bamos. So Shas Heter Bamos, after Chatzos. So what's the problem with it? So the problem is, so the Habish, so the problem is, is that it actually is now the problem we said before, that it's an obligatory Korban. Okay. So somebody says, what are you talking about? It says, how do you know you're not allowed to do it when Bamos are forbidden? So the Gemara says, no, Iser Bama Lo, Heter No, it's Aser for the Korban Pesach. It's a time, it's Mutter for your, for, for, for other Korbanot, for like your Neder and Dava. Okay, so meaning, it's a very bizarre read of this Brighta, but as opposed to the way we read it before, which it actually was sa sounded, was a shocking idea. The simple way we read it before was, was that, you know, that you, at a time of Heter Bamot, everybody could bring their private Korban Pesach, even though the whole idea of Korban Pesach is a Korban Tzibor, okay? It sounded like, you know, maybe it meant that they all bring it in Gilgal or not, whatever. And anyway, right. it didn't you sound can, like You build that. a base back somewhere around Gilgal. You I don't have to maybe, go to right. well, that's Anyway. What, that's what they did. Right. What, what? I mean, they brought Korban Pesach in Gilgal. Uh, by Yoshua. Yes, by Yoshua. Yeah. <clears throat> that's a good point. Um... And they make a big deal about it. You know? No, but meaning everyone can put their own, make their own little bama in Gilgal, as opposed to being at the central bama. In Gilgal. Right, Maybe right, that's... correct. Meaning, meaning that's my, Michael's incorrect. The shot of our Mishnah is is that when you have a place like Gilgal or Novan Givon, mm -hmm. then you have communal and obligatory sacrifices are brought at like in the central bama, right. okay, or at least obligatory ones, whatever. Anyway, they're brought at the central bama. So the fact that Yoshua brings the Korban Pesach in Gilgal is fine. The simple reading of Rabbi Shimon's statement is that at the time of Heterobamos, everybody can bring it in their private backyard. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what's very strange. Mm -hmm. But so the Gemara never really addresses that. The first read of this bright is it ignores that fact that he seems to be saying at the time of Gilgal brings it in your backyard. And it basically says he's telling you that there's an Isser of, uh, of bringing it 
even before Chatzos. And from there we learned that at the time of Isser Bamos, it's forbidden even Kodim Zamano. That would be a relatively simple read, ignoring the idea that he says you get to bring your Korban Pesach in your backyard at the time of Gilgal. Now we're reading it very differently. Now we're reading it that when he says at the time of Isser Bamos, he doesn't really mean Isser Bamos. He really means at the time when you're not allowed to bring your obligatory Korbanot on a Bama. That's all Isra Bamos means. Okay, yes, it's a time of Heter Bamos. You can bring your Shlomim and your Ola and whatever, but it's a time when you're not allowed to bring your obligatory Korbanot on a Bama. So how do you know that you actually transgress? Like we said before, how do you know you would transgress if you brought an obligatory Korban on a Bama? Because it says, by the Pesach, lo tuchalis bochat Pesach. So lo tuchalis bochat Pesach is now, according to this read, coming to tell you not that there is a negative prohibition at the time of Isra Bamot, to be bringing it Kodim Zmano, that's one read, but we're trying to say Lut Chalit Belchad is telling you at a time of Heter Bamot, okay, you are still not allowed to bring an obligatory Korban Pesach, okay? So and how do you get the Chushu Zman out of this? What? No, so you got, okay, Lut Chalit Belchad et Pesach, okay? Echad Sharecha. Okay, that kulam nichnasim So we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so what does it say? So he says. So the simple reading is of this is at a time of of iser bamot. Of iser bamot, of course, you're not allowed to bring your kavan pasach. So then the chiddush is that even though it's mechusers man, there still is a lav, even if it's kodem chatzot. Okay, that was the first read. It's time of Isr Bamot, and okay. And so why do you need a separate Pasuk? It's that Pasuk tell you even if it's Mechusr's man. Okay, then the Gemara suggests, okay, and then this is, would be saying, so this is read number one, and then according to read number one, what this would be saying is, at a time of Heter Bamot, you can bring, presumably, a private Korban Pesach, which is wild, and we don't, just, we don't stop to figure that one out. Okay, that's what it sounds like, unless you read it to mean that you can bring it at a central bum or something. But that's at least what it sounds like. Okay, we'll just leave this with a question mark. Okay, but, but that's what he says. Uh, it's a, there's still a problem of Mukhosh Rasman, and then the time of Heter Bamot, go ahead and bring your Korban Pesach. Maybe every individual, maybe in a separate location. Wouldn't that be read? a yes. contradiction of ideologically to bring it your own? Yes, your own yes. Yes. yes, which is why I keep on pointing it out. <coughs> it's bizarre, the bird doesn't bother to deal with it. Now, the second read of this is, we're actually talking about, even though he says Isra Bamot, we're really talking about a time of Heter Bamot. Okay, it's Heter Bamot for your, for your like, Ola and your Shlomim. Okay, and at the time of Isser Bamot, what we mean by that is that even at a time of Heter Bamot, it still remains Usser for a Korban Chova. Okay, and what this is telling you is that even at a time of Heter Bamot, you can't bring your Korban Pesach on a Bama because that's an obligatory sacrifice. Okay, and what we would learn from this is that the not in halacha of mechusers man bebama. What we learn from this is at the time of heter hamot, you still you you transgress if you bring an obligatory korban. Right. So, but then then I, then to follow up with what I said before. Okay. Then you wouldn't know the uh, Rabbi Shimon's halacha of mechusers man to get one of those other two. Right, right. Which were which, 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 which itself yes. was difficult. Right, so, All right. So this was the best learning for Rabbi Shimon. Yeah. And the Rabbi Shimon says it's not mukhra. Okay, there's another possible way of reading this. But of course, the first way of reading it is the simplest one. Why not read it that way? And it's a good basis for Rebbe Shimon. Okay, what it also doesn't unexplain, if we're talking about Heter Bamot, what does this mean? That, what, what does this mean? What's the second part of it mean? So let me remind myself what Rashi says the second part of that means. Um, one minute. Oh, so he says that this means, uh, whatever, he says this would mean even before it's a Pesach, Kodim Zemano, it's a Shlomim. It's a very weak read of the whole Brighton, okay? It is much better to read the Brighton the first way 
and that gives you the basis for Rabbi Shimon. It's the Pshat of the Brita. We don't know what it's saying here. We don't know if it's actually saying that at the time of Hetamama, you can bring your private Korbesa. Maybe it means you can bring a Korbesa at the central location at Gilgal. As Charlie said, is why you go to But anyway, at least well, at least this, the simple read would be at the time of Isra Bamot, there's a time you don't get Kares and you still get a lav, and that would be a very straightforward basis for Rabbi Shimon. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so now it says like this. It gives other examples of something that's mechus shman because of the owners, the bailim. So, for example, the owner is a zav or a zav or a yoledes, and they haven't waited their requisite number of days till they bring a chatas. So, therefore, the, the korban is ready, but the owners aren't ready. And, therefore, the korban can't be brought. You can, you know, an ola or a shlamim, even if somebody like a Yoledes brings an Ola, okay, so if he brought it before her right time, it still is Royal Lepetacho Moe, because you can bring an Ola for something else. But her Chatos before the right time is not Royal Lepetacho Moe. So if the Yoledes is Chatos, if her Ola is brought, Bechutz, even before her period of childbirth, whatever, her seven days or 14 days or whatever, or you know, actually, no, 40 days, 80 days, whatever, before that period is up, okay, if it's brought by chutz or chatas, she's, whoever brings it is putter. Because a chatas, before it's time, before you're you're obligated, then it, you're not able to bring it. A chatas only works within the parameters of obligation. But her ola brought before that time, you, outside the basement, that you'd be chayiv, because that could be brought inside and for another korban. All right, so that's what the Mishnah said. Except the Mishnah was a little bizarre because it said these people, if they bring their chatas and asham outside before their right time, they're you know they're potter. They're all in shlamim. They're chay. Because since what asham are you talking about? A zav, a zav, a yoledes. There's no asham. Okay, so the Gemara says, "Vahani bnei asham was nino." What's the scenario of an asham by the people you listed? So, uh, so uh, yeah, so our mission didn't originally have the Gersh Mitzora. I'm going to say, Tani Mitzora Behadayu, throw in Mitzora. Okay, Mitzora does have an Asham. Our, in our mission, it's in there already. Okay, then it says, okay, but if you bring their Ola or Shlomim before the right time, you're Chayev, because those could be brought in the base of Mikdash. So the Gemara says, Ola Sem Shlomehem, Hani Bidin Shlomim Minu, who here brings a Shlomim? So the Gemara, it's not part of their Tuma and coming out of their Tuma. So Amr Shay says, Tani Nazir, Nazir, throw in Nazir in the list. Because the Nazir brings a Shlamim, and also his Shlamim is not, he also has Chataot, there's a Chatos for a Nazir, and there's a Shlamim. So it's also one of these people that the time hasn't come yet, their Chatos too soon would not be Royal of Hatchome, the Shlamim would. So why is the Torah on the list but not Nazir? So now the Gemara says, the Ziiri Kavua Tanai, the, the addition, <laughs> emendation of Ziiri of Mitzora was incorporated by the Tanayim. Now, does the Tanayim mean, does this mean that like the early Tanayim and Ziri is just reporting an, another text that existed from the time of the Tanayim? Or does he mean the Tanayim here are not like the early Tanayim, but it means that the people that would memorize and teach over the Mishnayot and whatever, they incorporated this and this became the new text. Okay, but Rav Sheshis Rav Sheshis edition of Nazir was not incorporated. Right. Why not? Tosos points out. Because one of these things is not like the other, okay? Mitzora is Tame. Everybody else on the list is Tame, okay? So therefore, Mitzora belongs much more on that list than a Nazir does, all right? So that's why Mitzora was incorporated and why it appears in our Mishnah and Nazir does not, all right? So now the Gemara says like this, okay? Um, now, I'm... Um, I'm Rabbi Chilkia, Rabbi Tuvi, uh, Rabbi Tuvi or whatever. Lo shanu el lishmo, avo shelo lishmo chayev. Ho v'roi lishelo lishmo bifni. If you're talking about an asham, this only works by an asham, so it's the one case of the asham that we're talking about, about like the, uh, what do you call it, about the, um, about the mitzora. Okay, you have this asham that the time has not yet arrived, and you shecht it outside of the base of mikdash. So you're putter, it's not royal petachol moe. But let's say you shecht it outside the base Hamikdash as an Ola. You got me? You got it? Mm -hmm. So what's the halacha if you shecht an asham in the base Hamikdash as an Ola? What's the halacha? Well, wasn't that a machloka? It wasn't afa asham. Okay, but if you don't say an asham is like a chatos. The general approach is if you shecht an asham, so lowly shro, it's kosher, lo lo by the shame chova. So is the asham roi lepetach o moe? Because you can shecht it inside. Now here's- But you can't say it's roi because you can do something wrong. Well, I mean, maybe you could, but here's the bigger question. Here's the bigger question. When we say when you shecht an asham with shame ola, it's kasha below ala lebailin with shame chova. Is it basically an asham that you didn't ruin too much, 
Or is it now something else? Since you called it an Ola, it's sort of like a quasi Ola. It's a little bit like you redefined it. Mm -hmm. Normally, we assume A. We assume it's an Asham, but you didn't. You did a Shiloli Shema, but that didn't ruin it too much. It only ruined it a little bit. Okay, but if that's true, then this Asham, it's still not yet. It's time to be brought. Mm -hmm. So an Asham Shiloli Shmo, here's a question. I'm a, I'm, I, I'm a Mitzorah. I'm obligated in my Asham. It's not yet the time to bring it. I bring it in the base of Mikdash and they check the Shiloli Shmo. Are, they, are the Kanim allowed to eat the meat? Or is the whole thing, it's like, it, it's, it's it, the same way if they check the Shmo, it would be, it would be Mechusr Zman and it would be Paso. When you check the Shiloli Shmo, it's Mechusr Zman, it's Paso. Shiloli Shmo doesn't stop it from being an Asham. That's the natural thing to say. So he's saying here's a bizarre idea. Forget the fact you could and you haven't done it yet. What he's saying here is, no, if you shechted this Hashem in the base of Mikdash, mechusr's man, and you called it an Ola, it would be kosher, because then we'd stop looking at it as an Hashem. Okay? And therefore, if you shechted it out of the base of Mikdash, shaloli shmo, you're also going to be high. So let's read that. Okay? Lo shanol shmo. When are you putter when you shech this Hashem out of the base of Mikdash? When you shech it lishmo, or stop. Avo shaloli shmo, if you shechted it out of the base of Mikdash as an Ola, chayev, you're chayev. Why? Hoi over Roy Lishaloli Shmo Bifnim. Because if you were to shechted Shaloli Shmo in the base of Mikdash, it would be kosher, which is a huge chiddish, which you're going to get to in a second. Mm -hmm. So therefore, when you shechted Shaloli Shmo out of the base of Mikdash, you're chai. So the Messiah says, Ihachi Bishmo Nami Nichayev over Roy Shaloli Shmo Bifnim. If that's true, be chai when you shechted Lishmo outside. Because even if I'm shechting Lishmo and it's puzzled this way, had I shechted it Shaloli Shmo, it would have been Roy, so let me be Chayev, you know, because it could have been Roy Lebet the whole moment. I says, no. Boy, Akira. No, no, no. Because until you do it Shalom Lishmo, you haven't changed its identity. So when you shecht it Lishmo outside the base of Mikdash, you're Pater. Because its identity is as an Asham. And as an Asham, it's not Roy Lebet the whole You don't say, you know what they say, like if grandma had wheels, she'd be a trolley car. You don't say that if this Asham was an Ola, you'd be Chayev. Right now, it's an Asham. You never heard that phrase? Okay, anyway, so right now, this Asham, right now, this Asham is still an Asham. And as an Asham, it's Mechusr's man and your Pater, okay? You don't say, oh, but I could have made it something else. As an Asham, your Pater. But if you did make it something else, if you shechted it as an Ola, you're Chayev, because then it would be Kusr in the base of Mikdash. All right, you know, all that makes sense, assuming that you would actually be kosher in the base of Mikdash. But that is a bizarre idea. You bring an Asham that's Mechusr's man, you shecht it and you call it an Ola, and not only do we say it's not totally puzzle, we actually say you made it a little bit like an Ola, and therefore now it's actually going to be kosher, even though as an Asham it's Mechusr's man. So that's the question the Gemara asks. We'll ask that question and then we'll work to answer tomorrow. So the Gemara says, I don't get it. When you shecht it in the base of Mikdash as an Asham, it's possible because it's Mechusr's man. You shecht it as an Ola, you make it, you, you now make it kosher. Okay? So an Asham shecht it as an Ola is, the, the shechting it as an Ola doesn't totally possible it, but it doesn't make it something else. Okay, apparently he held otherwise. He held when you shecht an Asham as an Ola, you a little bit change its identity. Okay, and so that's why, and therefore he says, it makes it kosher because it's no longer Mechusr's man. You no longer look at it as an Asham. Okay, so we'll read one sentence. I know we're already over. Let's read one answer because this is the obvious retort yeah, yeah. where something Shalom Lishmo is kosher, yeah. more kosher than Lishmo. The low, Vahare Pesach, Bishayi Moser Shana. What do you mean a Pesach, what we just mentioned, then when it's not when it's not Pesach, the Enu Kosher Lishmo, when you do it Lishing Pesach, it's possible. The Kosher Shalom Lishmo, when you do it for something else, it's kosher. So there, when you do it Shalom Lishmo, it gets better. Says, no. Pesach, shana, shlamin, you know. There's a special halacha that when it's not Pesach, it's considered a shlamin. So when you do it shalol shame Pesach, you're not really doing a shalol shmo. Its identity has already changed. Okay, so that is what we're going to explore tomorrow. If you shech all along, which is going back way to the beginning of the Masechet of Shalom Shmo, we've always assumed shalol shmo is a psul, but not a totally destructive psul. And what here he's trying to say is actually it might change its identity. And Shalol Shmo could take something that's an Asham, that's Mechusr's man, and by calling it something else, you actually could make it kosher, because you make it a little bit not an Asham, you make it something else. Okay, so we will continue with this tomorrow. But if it does change it to an Ola, the Kohenim still are